Welcome to the inside of your head. Oh my god, can it really be a list video? Well, maybe. But this one is kind of different. You see, I've got this benchmark for if something is going to be a good video. And that's you go into a room full of people with science PhDs and you ask them a question. Like, say, for instance, which has more surface area, a human or the Statue of Liberty? You know, if you, if you include all the cell membranes and the such like. And if you get a room full of people looking back at you with that deer caught in the headlights look, you know it's going to be interesting. Yeah, you see, we spend all of our life being human. Only human. And that often means you never get to see the wood through the trees. It's like all of us spend all of our lives sat in the gravitational well of a single spinning rock on the surface. And almost no one knows which way that rock is spinning. Spoiler alert, it's anti-clockwise. Well, at least if you think north is up. So let's go for the first amazing fact of your body as it's literally like the TARDIS. It's bigger on the inside. Is it? I noticed. <laughs> Much bigger on the inside. Ah, oh, right. Yes. Bigger on the inside. Do you like it? I, I thought it'd be cleaner. Cleaner? How much bigger? Sorry, no spoilers, spoilers yet. But let's start with the smallest surface on your body, your skin. Yeah, your skin takes up about two square meters, which is quite a lot considering. So to help you visualize it, here I have a square meter. So the area at the front of the back is two square meters. So fact two, the biggest part of your body that's exposed to the atmosphere isn't the outside, it's the inside your lungs. Your lungs have a surface area of some 60 square meters. That's 30 times more of you is exposed to the atmosphere on the inside than on the outside, which most people go, wow, that's amazing. My lungs have about the same surface area as a tennis court. But trust me, it's nothing. It's like one of those eh, facts of life compared to where we're going. Now, it should immediately strike you as odd that the inside of your body is about 100 times bigger than the outside of your body. Eh, we'll come back to that one in a little bit. So, amazing fact number three is you're made up of little cells. Lots and lots of little cells. Now, at this point, many of you might say, that doesn't sound so impressive. But trust me, it is. All of them, eh, not that different in size from a bacteria. Which is amazing if you think about it. Those little cells have surfaces on them that are really important to life. And if you think about it, what goes on to keep bacteria and the such like alive isn't that different to what needs to happen to keep your cells alive. The main difference, of course, between us is one type of cell, the nerve cell, which I'll come back to in another video. The stunning thing of most of us, think of ourselves as a solid lump rather than one giant, massively interactive membrane. So let's just take a, a typical cell. And to make the maths a little easier here, I'm just going to assume that it looks like a cube. It's about 10 microns by 10 microns by 10 microns. And yeah, just for a ballpark here, a human hair is about 100 microns. So your typical human cell is about one tenth the uh, length scale of a human hair. A micron, for those who are interested, is a millionth of a meter. So the surface area of one face of this cube is, of course, 10 millionths of a meter by 10 millionths of a meter, which is about 1 times 10 to the minus 10 square meters. And we have six of those faces in a cube. Okay, so that, that's, that's about 5 times 10 to the minus 10 meters squared surface area for a single cell. Eh, it's not so much. Then you consider there are some 37 trillion cells in the human body. Cool. So now we've got the facts all together. The human body, just the outside, is about two square meters. The lung area, the gas exchange mechanism, is some 60 square meters. But just the surface area of your cells is some 20,000 square meters. 
That means that if you were to get all the membranes in your body and spread them out as a sheet, they would be about 100 meters by 100 meters. And 100 meters is about the size of the Statue of Liberty. And of course, it would only be about a tenth of the thickness of a human hair. And just so you know, that's way on the conservative side. You see, inside the cell, there are loads of other components, such as organelles and such like, all of which have their own membranes. So you could probably quite happily add another one to two zeros on top of this number. And when you look at the human body like that, you really start to appreciate just how much we depend on surfaces. It's cool. So let's go back to why the lungs have a hundred times the surface area of your skin. And the answer is fairly simple. You've got to get the oxygen out of the atmosphere and into your body somehow. And that's actually a fairly slow process. So the only way you can accelerate it sensibly is to have lots of surface area. In fact, it's stunning how much effort your body puts in just getting that oxygen out of the atmosphere and into your body. You see, the key problem is oxygen has lousy solubility in water and your body is mostly water. So the solubility of oxygen in water is about one hundredth of what it is in blood. Practical upshot is if you were to just rely on the solubility of oxygen in water, you would die pretty quick. So your body manufactures this protein called hemoglobin and puts it into red blood cells. Those are manufactured in your bone marrow. Then you need this huge circulatory system running at eh, pretty near maximum capacity powered by a couple of watt pump, which is almost synonymous with life. Then, of course, your spleen is a sort of red blood reservoir. And when those red blood cells die, you've got to get rid of that heme unit that binds the oxygen in hemoglobin. And that's a large part of what your liver does. Then it dumps that broken down heme unit into your digestive system, to which point it's green. So yeah, it turns out the reason that blood is red and bile is green is because of the same compound that increases the solubility of oxygen in your blood. And then, of course, finally, by the time it's worked its way through your digestive system, it's oxidized a little further and gone brown. So it turns out the reason that blood is red, bile is green, and poop is brown is all because you need a lot of oxygen in your blood. This, incidentally, is also one of the reasons why if you get something going wrong metabolically with your body, one of the first warning signs of that is your poop changes color. But you just look at the number of organs that are needed just to increase the solubility of oxygen in your blood. The bones, the lungs, the heart, the circulatory system, the spleen, and the liver. But wait, I hear you say, you promised us seven amazing facts about life. Okay, well, let's try some more of these. The human genome, that's the DNA, the thing that makes you uh, genetically you. Turns out most of what makes you you is your brain, but whatever. The genetic part is, if you were to stretch it out, would be about two meters long. So it's one of those cool things that if you're tall, you're taller than your DNA. And if you're short, then your DNA is taller than you. But of course, because you have some 37 trillion copies of that in your body, it turns DNA from being one of the most informationally dense memory storage devices on the planet to being one of the least, in that you have 37 trillion redundant copies of this thing. And so, of course, let's see. If we were to string all of that DNA together, one strand is two meters, and let's say there are 50 trillion cells in your body, so that means there's about 100 trillion meters, or 100 billion kilometers. 100 billion kilometers! That's the length of all the DNA in your body. And just to put that into perspective, the Earth is only 150 million kilometers from the Sun. Or to keep it in sci-fi terms, if you were to string all of the DNA in your body out and you could travel at the speed of light, it would take you almost four days at light speed to get to the end of your DNA. Which I'm going to declare to be amazing fact number seven, because there are many times that you get to use the word light speed and human genome in the same sentence. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you did, drop a like on this video and hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss out on more uploads like this.
And as ever, if you really enjoyed this video and want to support this channel, you can do it directly through Patreon or by visiting my Amazon store below. And as ever, thanks for watching.